Let's derive some important equations related to projectile motion. As I told you earlier that a projectile motion can be decomposed into two sections. So I have divided this screen into two sections. The one is vertical and other is the horizontal. I will do relevant calculations in these sections. In the left section which is for the vertical motion, I have written three equations of motion for the bodies moving under the effect of gravity. I hope you are familiar with them because we will use them to calculate some important quantities, for example, the time, the time of flight. The variables used in the equations of motions are vi, which is the initial velocity, vf, which is the final velocity, t is time, and h is the maximum height attained by the object moving under the effect of gravity. Let's calculate the expression for time of flight. We know that time of flight of a projectile is the time from the beginning to the very end of the journey. We know that when a projectile starts its journey, it starts with some initial velocity v. Since we are considering only the vertical part of the projectile motion, so we can imagine that the projectile goes up with an initial velocity v sine of theta. Remember, when we are dealing with the vertical motion, always take the vertical component of the velocity. When we are dealing with the horizontal motion, we will take horizontal component of the velocity because the horizontal component of the velocity has nothing to do with the vertical motion. So we will only take v sine of theta for calculating a quantity which is related to the vertical motion. So we can imagine that object goes up straight with an initial velocity of v sine of theta. We know that the force of gravity will act on the body continuously. So the velocity will decrease with increasing height. It will attain a maximum height where its final velocity will become zero for a moment and then it will start falling down to the earth. Now the velocity of the body will start increasing due to the gravitational acceleration g and it will have the velocity v sine of theta before hitting the ground or surface. Now we are interested in calculating the time t of the total flight, which is essentially the time from the beginning to the point where the object attains maximum height, which we can call it t1, plus the time it takes for the object from the maximum height to the point where it hits the surface, which is t2. And the total time of flight is the sum of t1 and t2. But we know that the t1 and t2 are equal because of the motion under the effect of gravity. So we can only calculate t1 and then we can simply multiply it with 2 to get the total time of flight. Let's calculate the time t for the upward motion. I have three equations of motion for a body moving under the effect of gravity. I can't use this equation because it doesn't have any time t in it. The first equation does have time t in it, but it also has h, which is the altitude of the object. And I don't have this information at the moment. All the information I have is velocity. So I would like to use this equation to calculate the time t because it has only the velocity and time t which I want to find. I am rewriting this equation final velocity. Final velocity is the velocity where the body ends its journey. And initial velocity is the velocity with which a body starts its journey. Minus g multiplied by 
velocity. I know that the final velocity is zero. This is the velocity where the body reaches its maximum height because the upward journey of the body ends at the maximum height. After that, it will start falling down and which is the downward journey of the body. So V final is zero equals and initial velocity is the V sine of theta. The body starts its journey with V sine of theta minus G T. I can subtract V sine of theta on both sides of the equation because I am trying to isolate the time T. So it will become negative V sine of theta equals negative GT. The time T is then equal to V sine of theta divided by G. This is the time for the upward motion. And we know that a projectile motion has downward motion in it the object reaches its maximum height and then it's then it starts falling down and we know that these two times are equal so to find the total time of flight i can multiply this value with 2 to find the total time of flight from the beginning to the final where the body touches the surface or earth so now if you are given a problem related to projectile and you are asked to find the total time of the flight, all you need is the velocity and the angle theta, which the velocity is making with the horizontal axis. You can easily find the time of the flight. Let's calculate the horizontal distance of the projectile which we call it range. Range is the maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile. Here I will use this formula which is distance equals velocity times the time. A question is that why am I not using the equations of motions for the horizontal part? The answer is that for the horizontal motion, the velocity v cosine of theta is constant. If velocity is constant, then we will use this formula. Equations of motion are only applicable when there is a change in the velocity or acceleration is involved. No acceleration is involved in the horizontal part. That's why we will use this formula for the constant velocity. I tell you that a change of velocity happens when there is a force acting on the body against the motion. And then this is the point where the velocity will start changing. Acceleration comes in and then we will use equations of motion. So here we have only constant velocity so it's easy. I can use this formula to find the range r which is of course is the horizontal distance covered by the projectile. So range R is equal to velocity and I know that the velocity is V cosine of theta which is the horizontal component of the velocity because I am dealing only with the horizontal motion. So I will only take horizontal component of the velocity. So it will become V cosine of theta multiplied by with the time. This is the time of the total flight. And I have already found the value of this time here, which is actually the time of flight. And these two times are equal. Whether you take the vertical motion or the horizontal motion, the total time of flight is equal. So now because I know the value of time t, I can express the range in terms of velocity and the angle theta. So V cosine of theta multiplied by the total time of flight which is 2 V sine of the theta divided by G. So 
if you are asked to find the total horizontal distance or range of a projectile, you can still find it if you know the velocity and the angle theta of the velocity with the horizontal axis. You can compact this equation by joining the similar variables r equals 2 times v squared sine of theta multiplied by cosine of theta divided by g. It doesn't matter but it looks good. Now it's time to calculate the altitude of the projectile. We know that it, uh, it starts with a vertical velocity v sine of theta. Altitude is related to the vertical motion. So I am using vertical component of the velocity. It reaches a maximum altitude and it will stop for a moment before it starts falling down. So its velocity will become zero. And I want to calculate the value of h, maximum height attained by the object. So now I can use any of these equations. I have the choice because I have calculated the time t. I know uh, the value of initial and final velocity. So you can use any of these equations, but I am lazy. So I will rather use this equation because it's more simple to calculate height h. By the way, what, whichever equation you use, remember you will always get the same expression. So I am rewriting this equation here, negative 2g h, h is the altitude of the object, v of f squared, minus v of i squared. v of f is the final velocity, v of i is the initial velocity, h is the altitude. So I will insert these values, negative 2g h equals 0 squared minus v sine of theta squared. Now I will calculate h equals v, v squared sine squared theta divided by 2g because I will multiply this equation with 2 times g to isolate h. So this is the maximum altitude of the projectile. Once again, if you know the value of velocity and theta, you can always find the maximum altitude of a projectile.